What's up, everybody? I'm back for the breakdown of the Thursday, November 30th slate. We've got five games tonight. It's a really weird slate of games. Um, it's going to need a breakdown. I don't expect to do a live stream tonight. Just going to take a night off, you know, cook a good dinner, be a good person. Little stuff like that. But I need to dive into this now. It's. We'll get to it when we get to it. So, first game up is the Hawks. Let me get my short list open. Rebuilt my sheet, don't have my short list. Great look into uh, how quickly I get my crap together and prepare for this sort of stuff. Alright, so for Atlanta, they've got a 104 implied total, which is fourth on the night. Admittedly, I have made up the spread for the Celtics and the, the Celtics game and the Clippers game. Just looking at this, I think that my Celtics uh, line is a bit too high. Let me lower that. I don't know why I answered 215. Let's try 205. That looks better. Although that makes Philly look worse. I just want this to look correct. You know what? Philly might just be worse. That might just be what it's supposed to be. Okay. So, Hawks are 104 implied total. This line is real. Um, and there's some interesting stuff to like for the Hawks because Dwayne Dedman is hurt. So, this could be really interesting if Luke Babbitt wasn't likely to be back, but he is. So, right now, there is some value out there for the Hawks. First guy I want to take a look at is John Collins. Um, he needs 29 and a half to hit value. I've got him projected for 30 straight off the bat. Hit a stinker in his last one, but um, you know these might be more minutes related, the 40 and the 36 here. But he can get to that 30 mark with the right amount of run and as long as he stays out of foul trouble um, those minutes are going to be there for him to play the Hawks are bad they have no reason not to play him I'm just a little nervous about the Luke Babbitt um, minutes if you want to get interesting in a GPP I think Ersan Sova is in play now that he is going to get some minutes with um, Dwayne Dedman now other than that I'm going to take a look at Schroeder, 7,400. He needs, what, 36, 37 to hit value. He's done that in two of his last six. Is this refreshed? It is now. Two of his last six. Let's take a look and see how uh, that matches up for Cleveland. And the Hawks are just bad. So, you know, even though they have a really like they've got a decent implied total for the night you know this isn't the place where you really want to make your bed bad copy better copy why is that sorting like it is ah that makes sense Torian Prince not on my um help sheet for cleaning the glass. Everybody's got a different nomenclature. Really annoying. Can't everybody just call people the same name? Like, how is there not just one set way to have a guy's name? Especially guys that are like, have been in America for a hot minute. Okay, uh, Schroeder. Not much of a three-point shooter. 
Uh, I mean, if you're confident in Luke Babbitt getting run tonight, he's in a decent spot, but I don't really like anything other than Collins. And at that, I don't even love it. So we'll hop over to Cleveland, where I assume LeBron James is going to be um, relatively popular. He's at 12,000 on FanDuel, 11.7 on DK. He needs 60 to hit value. Did it in his last time out in 28 minutes while getting the gate. Um, he's put up 60 in three of his last seven, you know, with some 50 pointers sprinkled in there. Um, the blowout potential is a little less since it's in Atlanta, which is helpful. Um, I'm going to grab the Cavs breakdown here. But right now, I think LeBron is uh, shockingly a good play tonight. I know um, that's probably taking catching a lot of people off guard. But, you know, sometimes you need to take the best player in the world. Um, so, yeah, I do like him. It's not, like, my favorite thing in the world, but... He's LeBron, and you have to always look at him. Kevin Love, on the other hand, looks downright tasty. Let's add JR back, since apparently I didn't copy him over either, even though I thought I did. Let's get Redick as well while I'm here. Probably going to be somebody else I miss. Love Kevin Love tonight. He needs 39 to hit values at 7,800. Obviously, he hit that 39 in the last one out. He went crazy. Um, he's only done it one other time in his last seven. And uh, he was real close on the second one. He had 38. But um, this feels like a really good spot for love. So it's, it's definitely... I'm going to have a big focus on him. Cleveland has a 111.5 implied total, which is first on the night. So... I think I'll be firing up Kevin Love, um, barring any weirdness. It's always tricky at center if you need to like make a pivot to a lower own guy. Now on to Boston. Again, this line has been completely made up by me uh, because Embiid is not playing. That's pretty big. Um, and it's a road game, so the Celtics should be pretty heavily favored. They were going to be favored regardless, so this sh it's not really a great spot for Philly from a like a, an actual basketball perspective um, it's a shame that Embiid is sitting it's a shame this is a back-to-back -back. it would have been a really fun game to see the Sixers and the uh, and the Celtics be able to play at full strength but you know hey maybe we'll get lucky and we'll see that in the playoffs okay so for Phillies D and the Celtics. Uh, so here's what happens. You see Kevin Love and it's like, oh, Kevin Love's got a really good matchup. And then it's like, oh shit, so does Al Horford and I can only play one center. And, you know, that makes it tricky. So they match up really well here. I like Kyrie. I like Horford. These are just, you know, my statistical looks. Um, and I think I like Jason Tatum as well, just from a value perspective. So let's take a look. Irving needs 41 to hit 5x. He's done it in three of his last seven, which is fine. Um, I see no reason to not look into him. He's not like my lock or anything, but he is certainly a good play tonight. Horford, on the other hand, needs 36 and a half. He's done it just once in his last seven, but no Embiid um, should allow Horford to just really do whatever he wants to do. I'd imagine he's not going to be too concerned with like the Rashawn Holmes or Amir even. And he's got, he'll know if he can take a mirror, basically. And then Jalen Brown, or Jason Tatum, rather, um, 
5,100. He needs 25 and a half. He's done that three out of his last seven, although admittedly it hasn't been in the last three. Um, so he has cooled off a little bit, but he's definitely uh, someone I'm going to be focusing on at power forward, uh, particularly at that price. And these are subject to change a little bit um, based on the lines that come out. Now the Sixers, I was expecting this to open up a lot of interesting value and it didn't really. And it's just, it's more of a minutes thing than anything else in that um, it's not as if Rashawn Holmes is going, well, it's not as if I'm projecting Rashawn Holmes to uh, get like a, an overwhelming amount of minutes. But he still might be, you know, like tonight's bam, basically. McConnell's out. It doesn't, yeah. Uh, also, no TJ McConnell, or at least he's not supposed to play per uh, Brett, what Brett Brown had to say last night. Um, this is not a good game for the shoot the Sixers shooters, but it is a decent game to keep an eye on for Ben Simmons. Um, since they're on the back to back, um, that price hasn't really moved. Um, but he had a pretty big game last night. If he has a pretty big game again tonight, I can see him coming back with a, a 10k or higher price. So. Outside of Ben Simmons, I'm, I'm pretty much good here. I mean, I'm going to mark down Rashawn Holmes just because he's a min-salary guy that should get 20 minutes, and, you know, that's pretty valuable. Um, let's just take a look at Ben Simmons here, who needs 60 or 50 to hit value. He's done that in five of his last six only one that he didn't do it in is his first game back from injury, but he seems like a lock for 50. Um, but he will see, you know, a Celtics defense that is pretty good. So it'll be an interesting give and take, especially with Embiid off the floor. Um, Simmons is going to have to show something tonight because Embiid... I think Embiid is a large reason why Simmons is having as big a games as he is. He's, Embiid's gravity on the floor is just so vast that um, it opens things up for Simmons in a way that might be difficult on a night like tonight. And we're slowly but surely getting into a bunch of games that suck. Uh, the Nuggets and the Bulls. Nuggets are the second highest implied total on the night. <clears throat> Wilson Chandler is out. Obviously, Paul Millsap is out. Um, the Bulls aren't very good. So, this could be a... a it, I think they're going to be a pretty popular spot. Um, it's just going to be a little tricky because there's a lot of guys out there that you can land on for the Nuggets, especially when they have some guys out. So, right off the top... I would say that, you know, Jokic looks okay, but there's too many good centers out there, so it's not really for me. I will take a look at Jamal Murray, Harris, Barton, Juan. I got to look at everybody. Nobody is uh, off limits here. So, Murray needs 25. Which he's done twice in his last six. So I see no reason to not think that he has a decent shot. <clears throat> um, we've got Will Barton and Gary Harris. <clears throat> they both need, you know, 30. Harris has put up 30 in three of his last six. Barton has put up 30 in two of his last six. Well, Barton is a little bit more likely to lay an egg. He's a, you know, you can see in his last six is either 15 or 40, 
whereas uh, Harris feels a little safer. So I'm going to say that Gary Harris is on my short list. And then I want to look at Hernan Gomez and Farid. Hernan Gomez need Hernan Gomez is definitely in play on DK, 3,700. Um, he's 4,000 on FanDuel. So he needs 20. He put up 22 in the last game out. Um, and really, it, this is just more of a minutes play than anything else. He's going to have to get... He should be getting some, some decent run with Chandler out. So at the very least, he needs to be thought about. Um, he's not a bad play. There's not a ton of options tonight. And then Fareed, you know, if you think he's going to get minutes, I've got him at 23 right now. He's at 4,000 on FanDuel. He's at 4,300 on DK, which is not really desirable. Um, but if you think he's going to get minutes, he only needs to get to 20 points, which is pretty likely for, a, you know, Kenneth Fareed. He's a good per minute player. So. That's four dudes from Denver. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how I slot those guys in. Then heading to Chicago. Not a lot to like here. 98.75 implied total. It's 10th on the entire board. Um, I assume that I won't have any part of the Bulls, but on a five-game slate, it's, it's hard to just... Uh, it's hard to, to write anybody off right off the bat. But, you know, if you're going to write anybody off, it's it's the team with the lowest implied total on the entire docket. So, I am going to take a look at Justin Holiday Because Denver gives up a lot of corner threes. That fits his MO. And I think that I need to look at Denzel, Valentine, and Markinen as well. I don't expect to have these guys, though. Uh, Justin Holiday at 6,000. He needs 30. Obviously a big one in his last game out. He's hit 30 in two of his last seven. He's so streaky. Look, I'll look at him, but he would be a guy that I would end up with, not necessarily seek out. Then Denzel Valentine, 6,300, so he basically needs 31. Um, he's done that three times in his last eight. Um, I don't really feel as comfortable there just because he doesn't get as much usage. And then Markin in at 6,800 needs 34. He's done that once, no, twice in his last eight. Not at all in his last five, so I'm good. I will take a look at Justin Holiday, but he's a guy you end up with. Then Portland and Milwaukee. Um, this is a pretty ugly game from a DFS perspective. Fifth and eighth ranked guys or teams in points for tonight. Portland a slight favorite at home. Uh, Alfaruq Aminu is supposed to be back to get 20 minutes, so that sort of thins out the minutes of, you know, all the guys at shooting guard that aren't named C.J. McCollum, small forward, power forward. Um, so, really, it's Lillard, McCollum, and Nurkic if you want any part of this. What else is new? I don't know. Holy shit, December 1st tomorrow. Crazy. Christmas countdown is on. Alrighty, well that's not helpful. Looking at Milwaukee now because apparently that's what I'm copying. Um, obviously, Giannis is. Uh, I'm just gonna put that old name down. I think that, given the two, 
I wouldn't play Braun and Love together, even though they both went off in the last one. So if I go Giannis, I'm more likely to have Love. And if I go Braun, I'm more likely to have Horford. Just getting that out there now. Um, I don't love... Well, I guess I should take a look at Middleton. They do kind of limit threes. Uh, eighth implied to all. It's, I'm not even looking into it. Um, let me grab the Blazers quick. Like Middleton and Bledsoe might be okay, but I don't. Like I can't. I can't imagine having more than one guy from Milwaukee tonight with that implied total. Ooh, okay. So, what is this sort of ah stupid, stupid names without stupid, stupid periods in them? That's what happens when you update your spreadsheet. And don't copy everything over yet. You end up with crap. Okay. Lillard and McCollum uh, doesn't look like the best game for CJ. Doesn't really look like the best game for Dame either. Um, only guy that I think is worth a look would have probably been someone like... Uh, it's not even... I mean, Nurkic maybe. But... I don't think that I want to have any part of Portland tonight. Fade. And then we get to the saddest game on the slate. Clippers at Utah. Um, obviously the news is out that Blake Griffin is going to miss maybe two months with knee issues. Um, Gallo is still out. Beverly is out for the year. Taya Dosic is out. And it's just like, what do you do? Um, this line isn't real. I don't know what to make of it or who's going to be favored. You know, the Jazz obviously don't have um, Rudy Gobert. It's going to be interesting to see how the minutes shake out. You know, DeAndre Jordan isn't exactly going to be um, running the offense, so I don't know necessarily that this helps him. Um, so the guys that you need to look at are basically... Montrez Harrell and Sam Decker. I, I don't even know if they're going to have like enough shooting <laughs> stats to be worth looking at. How many minutes have they played? So Montrez Harrell has played 84 minutes. Sam Decker has played 115. Uh, he gets to the rim, I guess, and shoots threes. Utah, probably okay to get to the rim now. Defends the threes pretty well. I don't, if I need to fit in like a punt from uh, the Clippers, I'll do that. But I'm not taking, like, I can't take Lou Williams at 8,000. He needs 40, which he has done in his last two This is just sad. It's sad to look at. I'm just going to Utah. I feel bad for the Clippers. There's nothing there for me. The Clippers have a crappy implied total too, I would imagine. Um, I don't even know what to make. Like, The Clippers' defense isn't even going to be the same. They're missing... They're missing four of their five guys from their starting lineup at the beginning of the season. Beverly, Taya Dosich, Gallo, and Blake Griffin. I mean, that's frightening. So, I mean, how much of this is even relevant? I guess they're still going to let people get into the mid-range. I don't imagine that's going to change. So, I guess I like Derek Favors. And... Yeah, I'm willing to take a look at uh, Donovan Mitchell. So, Favors needs 37. 
put up 53 in his last one. He's done 37 in three of his last seven. So I will certainly take a look at favors. Who the hell is going to guard him? I guess DeAndre. And then uh, Donovan Mitchell needs 34. He's gotten there twice in his last seven. It could be interesting. That's probably all I'll look out for that game. That's a short, short list. I'm going to end up with guys that I don't really particularly like tonight if I play. Uh, it's possible I, I take the night off. We'll see uh, when I do a full build. But that's it. Um, those early games are going to be everything, I believe. And then, uh, you know, you'll see, I think you'll see a decent chunk of ownership in that Nuggets for the Nuggets. But it's going to be a weird one. Um, let me just run my op. Let's run the optimizer on what I have right now and see what it spits out. Because this could be really interesting. I think we'll see a lot of. Um, guys on teams that I don't like. <laughs> All right, so projections are dumped in and we end up with an optimal of Kyrie, Jamal, holy shit, I might like this a lot, <laughs> Donovan Mitchell, CJ, Jalen Brown, Hernan Gomez, Ben Simmons, Collins, and Nurkic. So... I would scratch CJ right away and see where that leads. I this is just disastrous. Just yucky across the board. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting build tonight, guys. That's all I've got. I am running super duper late. So, if you like this video, please like it on YouTube. If you like my channel, please subscribe to it, which would be awesome. If you want to follow me on Twitter, my Twitter handle's up there, as is my website URL. I don't make it too difficult. If you want to find me on any of these places, it's probably just my name. Um, I haven't had a non-full name web handle uh, since back in the late um, the late 90s, early 2000s IRC uh, era. But other than that, I've been Josh Engelman or Joshua Engelman on every sort of medium possible, pretty much as long as I can remember. Lucky me, I'm glad my name's not uh, John Smith, or I would have had to come up with some uh, witty handle. Anyway... Like, subscribe, follow, do all that stuff. Come check out the Reddit DFS uh, subreddit where you'll get uh, more of me if you ever want to reach out. But that's what I've got right now. No live stream tonight, guys. Going to take a break. We'll be back again tomorrow for it. Um, but until then, best of luck.